Hello and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long, and yes, we are going to be talking about Smith Wigglesworth on this episode. Wigglesworth was born in 1859, and he died in 1947. He was a very influential faith healer in the early Pentecostal movement, and he had some very unorthodox ways about his healing services. I have read of the great men and women of faith. One in particular intrigues me so much. His name, Smith Wigglesworth. He had some of the most outrageous miracles I ever heard of in my life. Uh, Let me give you one example. Some parents had a two-month-old baby dying in the hospital. The parents kidnapped the child took the child to a Smith Wigglesworth meeting, and Smith looks at the child, looks at the parents, and say, can I do what God tells me to do? Well, what would you do if you were the parents? The child's dying anyway, right? He takes the baby, two-month-old, throws the baby against the wall. People are laughing at this? Really? The baby. Then the baby's on the floor. He ta- have you ever seen someone play soccer? Have you ever seen them uh, kick a soccer ball? He does that with the baby. What the? I, 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 I don't even have words. The baby falls into the congregation. No crying. Is it dead? One hundred percent healed. No problem. Now, unfortunately, faith healers from the past and present have mimicked Smith Wigglesworth's tactics. Listen to Jack Coe talking to a lady on stage. I never do hurt anybody. Before I hit them, Jesus gives an anesthetic. You won't be right. And here's a few video clips that I strung together of Todd Bentley. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. I inched closer, and I went like this. Bam! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. God, I command polio. 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 I just command healing in that leg. Can you feel that? Polio. 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 Now that leg's going to begin to work in the name of Jesus. Lord, I command paralysis of this leg to loose. And he begin to feel in Jesus' name. Can you feel that? Sir, can you feel any sensation right now? I can feel some heat. You feel some heat? Yes. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let that leg come alive. Now, I don't usually make it a habit of kicking legs and being so rough. But I just felt like the Lord told me I just needed to kick him in his leg a few times. Now, what I want to do in this video is I want to take you over to a newspaper article. This is right here. This is a clip, a clipping that um, that I just clipped today, as a matter of fact. Now, last year I did a video called Inside a Smith Wigglesworth Meeting. And today I'm going to take you back inside another Smith Wigglesworth meeting. This meeting took place in New York in the early 1920s. And in this article, you are going to see the violence of Smith Wigglesworth. You're also going to see a very sad story of him not being able to heal a little blind boy. So let's take a look at this article right here. So here we are inside the article here. Let me just... Zoom out a little bit so you can see the page here and you can see the date. Uh, The date is right here. It's also right here, but it's here on the page, September 14th, 1924. The article is called How Smith Wigglesworth, Self-Styled Healer, Works with Audience at Fervor Heat. Now I'm going to zoom in so that you can 
see the article a little bit better. And uh, this is what we have. All right, let's take a look at this. 30 years ago, Smith Wigglesworth, then a mere youth in an English village, was pressed into service at an evangelical meeting, and he discovered suddenly that within him was the power to heal the sick, the halt, and the blind. Since then, he has circled the globe three times, carrying the gospel to the people and healing those who have in themselves the faith to make them whole. There, in a few words, is the story of Smith Wigglesworth, as told by himself at Arcadia Hall last week, following a strenuous religious meeting at the close of which he laid hands upon a long line of people who came forward to be cured of the ills with which they are afflicted. It's a divine power, he said to a reporter. It's a direct gift of God. It is one of the seven gifts spoken of in the scriptures, and I possess it. I have healed people all over the world. Cripples have come to me and thrown away their crutches after they felt the Holy Ghost enter into them. Last week, a man was here suffering from diabetes. He had faith, and he went away healed. Mr. Wigglesworth, a compact, earnest cockney, has every appearance of sincerity. In addition, he has the personal magnetism which creates faith in his audience. Whether or not he actually cures the ills of those who come to him to be healed, there is no testimony but that of those who profess to have been cured. They are apparent, there are apparently no kickers in the evangelist congregations. Those whose afflictions defy his voice and prayer and massage are judged to be by the congregation, or are judged by the congregation, by Wigglesworth, and by themselves as lacking in faith. The explanation seems satisfactory to everyone concerned. Those seeking cures return on the following night and again on the following night. Those who believe themselves cured return to praise God and testify to the divine powers of the healer. The meetings of Mr. Wigglesworth is staging in Arcadia Hall. Or I'm sorry. The meetings Mr. Wigglesworth is staging in Arcadia Hall are weird affairs to the spectator not inspired with the fire and zeal distinguishing the congregation. And it is apparently his intention that they should be so. About 350 persons defied the weather every evening during the week to be present in the erstwhile dance hall and political meeting place while Mr. Wigglesworth held forth. A tall man, his high stiff collar and whitewashed tie almost matching his complexion, leads the congregation in song after song, his arms waving like flails the while. Mr. James Salter, daughter of the evangelist and wife of a missionary, a pale woman, pounds a tambourine in time with the exciting rhythm of the religious songs. The congregation sings louder and louder and faster and faster, gradually working itself up to a high tension. Members of the congregation clap their hands in time with the music. A few with tambourines shake them. They're getting people all worked up with the music, and then people are contributing this kind of frenzy to the Holy Spirit. It's just, um, it's just the same thing, just at a different time. The tall, thin man occasionally interrupts the singing to shout, How do you do? to some latecomer. A chorus of hallelujah comes from the audience at the conclusion of each verse. One woman has her hand stretched toward heaven and is singing ecstatically with her eyes shut. Mr. Wigglesworth asked his audience how many believe in prayer. Almost every hand in the congregation is raised. Those who believe in praying aloud will raise both hands, he commands. Another sea of hands stretches toward the high rafters of the hall. Suddenly they are all praying, not in chorus, but disconnectedly and jerkily. Some pray softly and reverently, others shout and moan. The effect is appalling. 
The prayer ends in song in which all join and then come the testimonials from those who have been healed. I want to praise the Lord, one woman rises to say, because he cured my indigestion around the heart last Sunday. More hallelujahs. Another man rises in his seat. I want to praise the Lord, he shouts, for the wonderful way he cured me of a fever which had weakened me so that I could hear the death rattle in my throat. The Lord came to me, and I had faith. In the morning he said to me, Take up thy bed and walk. A woman praised the Lord for having, a cure, for having cured an attack of rheumatism in the left shoulder. Another for having cured her of deafness. Miss Salter takes a position on the platform and begins to talk in a high, thin voice, which rises higher and higher as the pace of her speech increases. I notice men digging cabbages, she shouts. It's all right to have a cabbage garden. But God doesn't want you pottering around with things as don't matter. And he doesn't want us women pottering around either. The audience is being worked up to fever pitch as she progresses. Moans and groans and little squeals are coming from every part of the hall. Suddenly, she leaves the platform and drops exhausted into a chair while her father continues where she left off. He attacks too much education, which he pronounces education. His voice has a cockney twain as he declares that colleges produce only footballers and cricketers. Or cricketers. I guess that's how you pronounce that. His face grows a deeper red to the roots of his hair, which starts to grow at the top of its head. His white British mustache works rapidly up and down as he talks. He finishes his prayers and exhortations and calls upon those with ills to come forward. Nearly one-third of the congregation forms in a long line in one of the aisles. There is a boy there who is blind. His father holds his hands and prays aloud for his son's recovery. The boy looks bewildered. Now watch this. This is really sad. His turn to be healed comes, the little blind boy's turn. His turn to be healed comes. Mr. Wigglesworth, who by this time has warmed up to his work and has removed his coat, places his fingers on the boy's eyes, raises his own eyes to the ceiling, and exhorts the boy to see. The congregation looks on breathlessly. There is a tense moment, and then the bewilderment in the face of the blind youth turns to despair. He is led away, still blind, by his father. Now look at what's being said about the boy here. This is in quotations. That boy is an Episcopal, says Miss Paul E. Rowe of Church Street, Richmond Hill. He hasn't got the proper faith, otherwise he would he would see. My husband was cured of an impingement of the spinal column on Monday night. You can print that in your paper. Her husband later admits that he had been healed of a soreness of the back with which he had suffered since a diving accident some years ago. Now watch what Smith Wigglesworth does here. This is the part where you can see his just unorthodox healing tactics. Uh, violent, if, if you would. An old lady suffering from rheumatism comes forward. She cannot lift her arms over her head in an attitude of supplication. Attendants lifted her arms for her. Mr. Wigglesworth rubbed her head, her neck, her arms and legs, and her back. He told her to walk and hop around. I am afraid. You're all right. That's the trouble with you. You're afraid. I can't help you unless you unless you are prepared to help yourself. Can you imagine Jesus saying that to somebody? I mean, literally. These people are supposed to be ambassadors of Christ, right? They're faith healers, right? He's, now look at this. He seizes the woman by the back of the neck and begins pushing her rapidly up and down in front of the platform. She screams and he releases her. Run, jump, you're healed. He shouts. She tries to run and jump and finally collapses in a chair. She refuses to give her name to a reporter. Hmm. Now look at her response. Do you think he has helped you, she was asked. 
I don't know. I'm all nervous and upset, but I think he did. No, I know that I'm healed. Two years ago, a faith healer cured me of a deafness, and for the first time in 20 years, I was able to hear a violin. They're all like that. Now let me ask you this. When you read the New Testament, do you ever see any of the apostles or prophets, do you ever see Jesus healing in this way? No. And there is absolutely no way that God ever told Smith Wigglesworth to to act that way. There's no way that God would have ever told Todd Bentley to act that way or Jack Coe to do that. There, it, it is garbage. It is false. Nowhere in Scripture do you see these kinds of things taking place. The Bible is very clear. And when the apostles and Christ healed someone, guess what? They were healed. They didn't have to, 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 to beg. They didn't have to plead. They were healed immediately. And yet you have people like the little boy in this meeting who walked away. Now, if that was a true gift of healing that Wigglesworth had, number one, he wouldn't act like that. And number two, every person that he laid his hands on would be healed.